Welcome back to Undisputed. We are now joined by Hall of Famer mm. and Big Three coach, Gary Payton. Mm. Gary, welcome mm. to Undisputed. How y'all doing? Welcome. Good, good. Y'all finally yes, give me all y'all show, huh? No, yep. you finally, oh. it's pretty good. Yeah. pretty good. We, we finally we, decided we, to get up early enough to come, come join us. Oh. Sometimes I don't want to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> well, touche, my, my, my dear sir. So, Gary, let me ask you. We're talking about it this morning. Where do you think LeBron James ends up this offseason? Well, you know what? I don't even want to talk about it. I don't talk about that. That's what LeBron want to do. He's going to do it. We're making a big deal about where he's going to go and all of that. So what? Y'all going to still look at him to where he's going to go. So now we'll say, okay, he should stay at Cleveland. Right. Okay, he should come to the Lakers. So what? Well, he's going to make the decision anyway. I just say, just do what he got to do so we can get this out the way. <laughs> That's all I say. Just get it out the way. Because right now, at the age that he at right now and the way he's playing and still the best basketball player in the world – his mindset should say that, be doing, you say that one more time. He's the best basketball player in the world. Mm. Somebody thinks Kevin Durant is better than he is. Well, somebody just won back-to-back -back finals MVPs. That's all somebody GP, saw. GP. Well, I'm a, well, well, we're not going to go on that, but mm. the best basketball player in the world is on Cleveland Cavaliers team right mm. now. I think that he, he makes things happen. He does a lot of things. He's an all-around basketball player. He makes everybody else better. Only mm. thing that I don't like about him is that he doesn't have that killer instinct like Michael Jordan. Correct. Michael Jordan would take over the game more. If LeBron was like that, we would be far not even talking about mm. a player like that. Yeah, you know, what do you because think Because he'll Shannon? be something else. No killer instinct. But he doesn't have that. Not that I don't say a killer instinct. I think that he's a more minded of about a round around mm -hmm. basketball player. He wants to make everybody better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan was a guy where, give me the basketball mm -hmm. and score 50 every night. Yep. Le LeBron doesn't think that way. He wants to make everybody else better around him. So it makes it a problem. And then he gets frustrated when he doesn't have the players around him right. that can do that to make shots like he do. Right. Kevin Durant went to a team that already had mm -hmm. shot makers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So he was already on a, a team in Oklahoma City where I thought they were pretty good too. He just probably couldn't get along with the guy with, with Westbrook or whatever. I don't know what happened over there. And he, he chose to come to a team that had won a championship and did it. That's his prerogative. I don't care. You know, but what I'm saying is, is that the best basketball player in the world who don't have that much talent on his mm -hmm. team that can will a team like Cleveland. Yeah. We was talking about Cleveland wasn't going to make it to the finals. Right. But what happened? You got a basketball player who took a team, and y'all say he turned the team around, he changed it or whatever. Whatever y'all want to say, that's not his basketball team. Mm. It's the owner who got that team. Now, he can make up a decision of saying what he, what he wants. He brought them guys there. What happened? They went to the championship, and he to took over an Eastern Conference uh, playoffs that I'd never seen a basketball player ever do. Mm. He took it over, and he won games for Cleveland and got them there, but he was just outmanned against a Golden State Warrior team. Mm. So let's talk about a point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers who could be part of a deal that would bring help for LeBron to L.A. if he comes to L.A., and that's one Lonzo Ball. And I've not heard your opinion, but you were obviously an all-time great point guard. What do you see so far or not see so far in Lonzo Ball? Well, I, I hate people to, to category this kid. This kid came out of UCLA, and his father put him up here which his father should have done. That's a father, whatever he wants to do, that's a father who wants to market his son. He markets all his son. Mm -hmm. That's what he should do. I don't care what it, but he does it the way that people don't like it. So what? That's him. His son has a mentality to be a, uh, has a good uh, ability to be a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. I see a great core vision that I never seen since Magic Johnson in this kid. I see a guy who can, who can, who can um, rebound the basketball. Yeah. I see a guy who can play one-on-one -on -one basketball and guard anybody in the league and stay in front of them mm -hmm. and do a great job. Good His point. only problem is, is that he doesn't have that mentality to score. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about a, a jump shot. A jump shot. I didn't have a jump shot when I came in the NBA. Mm -hmm. But I made myself a score. I made myself dominant to that basketball, to this game. My object was to put that little orange basketball in that orange rim right. and do it at a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. That's what Alonzo Ball should do. When he goes to the basket now, what he's doing is he gets to the basket and kick it. He doesn't think about it. Now he listens to everybody, I can't score, I can't shoot. Leave that out of your game. Just play. Go and work out this summer and work to the, and get your mentality of saying that 
I'm going to score when I need to. I'm going to do whatever I need to to mm-hmm. make my team better. And I'm going to average 16 or 17 points a game and do seven or eight rebounds a game. And then everybody will be like, whoa, this is the basketball player I've been waiting for. Now, if that happens and he gets traded for whatever the Lakers want to do, I think a team that needs a guard like that and he gets that mentality, they're going to get a good one. Mm. So how did you change from college to pro basketball to score? Did you did you invent a jump shot? Did you practice one until you had a jump shot? No, I didn't. You know what I did? I had a bad two years. Remember, I only averaged six points. Mm-hmm. Then the next year, I mm-hmm. averaged seven. The Seattle Supersonics was talking about trading me. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, I got a coach named Carl, uh, George Carl. Mm-hmm. Oh. Then I got another coach called <laughs> um, uh, um, Jim, uh, uh, Tim Gergerich. Mm-hmm. Tim Gergerich took me to Utah in my third season and made me play summer league again. He mm. took me and showed me videos of what I did in college and now what I'm, how I'm playing in the league. And he said, I want you to get back to that. Then my mentality was, I have to work out every day. I have to work hard. My mentality has to be different. And that's what I did. What was the key change? The key change is, is just work. I thought I came but, into but in your game. What what strategic? I put in. Changed? I put in. A, I put in a back down game. I posted up a lot of people. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got more aggressive. Yeah. I got more aggressive by going to the bucket. Don't care. Then I worked on my jump shot. I shot a lot of them. Still wasn't a good shot. But when my mentality got there, and I said every time I shoot it, I think it's gonna go in. LeBron James is doing the same thing right now. Mm-hmm. He's shooting jump shots, and people think he can't shoot it. But now everything's going in, and now he's yeah. talking about he's got a jump shot. First of all, it's the same shot. Mm. It's just that he worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, and got more confidence. Mm-hmm. And when you work on your game and get a, 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 every other point uh, or aspect in your game and make it better, mm. where it's no weak spots, yeah. where if somebody uh, adjusts to you, mm-hmm. Shannon, when you would play football, what would you do? You would come with something else. Exactly. Why, what, what are he's doing to stop me every right. time? You well, would go and get it. something. You got to counter that. So everybody has to understand you got to counter something when you do it. It's just, and, it's, and it happens all the time with basketball players that come into the league thinking they're better than what they are, mm. and they're really not that good. Right. Sure. And they got to counter and work and do the things that they have to. I'm listening, listening to you talk, and you said you had to work. Now, I'm assuming that you were working before, but as my grandfather used to tell my brother now, you were mistaking habit for hard work. You thought because you were going to the gym every day, you were working hard. That was a habit. You weren't working hard until your third year. The coach showed you what you needed to do, and then it clicked. You was like, now I'm working hard. Now I'm working because what Shannon is, when I went in there and I became the number two pick and I was an All-American, I didn't have a player to play against every year, every day that I did in the pros. Right. I didn't have a guy like Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a guy like Isaiah to play against. I only right. played against him one time in college, probably was in the, in the tournament. Right. But then when I got to the league, I, I got a big awakening. Right. I played against him every night. Right. And so I thought about it. So when I was going in there and just really dagging around, right. thinking I was somebody, oh, I'm the number two pick. I just got all the money. Right. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> I started getting killed in this game. <laughs> and it was a little bit different. Right. Sure. Then I said, okay, how am I going to stay in this league? Yep. And when I chose to work hard and get it to the point where I worked, 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 the game went up. Then I became all-star. Then I became the number one point guard in the league. Then I became a nine-time all-star. Then I became a nine-time first-team uh, uh, de- defensive yeah. player. So that was what? Then I won the defensive player of the year award. The only point did guard Did your mindset ever change? Because you were always a great defensive player. So did your mindset shift to a little bit becoming a little more offensive-minded player? No, I didn't change. I, I thought I was going to be a two-way guard in first time. I played for Ralph Miller uh, uh, from Oregon State. Right. Mm-hmm. He always told me, I can make you one of the best defensive players ever if you listen to me because mm-hmm. you got good hands and feet. And mm-hmm. I, I took that into the NBA. I said, if I don't do one thing uh, uh, be good, I'm going to do this the best. Right. I'm going to be a defensive player and I'm going to stop people. Right. And that's what I did. And I made sure of that. And then when I became a person where I learned how to score and became a two-way, it made my game a lot easier. Gary Payne, I hear you talking a lot, too, about really roles and expanding expected roles on the court, because that's what I recall from your playing days. As you're just pointing out for us this morning, you kind of went into it with a certain mindset, number two draft pick, all this stuff. But as you 
basically ran up against a situation that was different than what you came into the league expecting. You made the adjustments. Right. Can you talk a bit about what kind of maybe adjustments you'd like to see from like Lonzo Ball and really just some of these new gen point guards in general? Well, the adjustments I like to see with these, with these kids, first of all, stop being like you know everything. Mm. You know, go and ask somebody, an old school guy, to ask for help. I go into places and I see George Gervin and I see uh, uh, Dr. J. That's respect. Definitely. I get them respect from day one because I watched them growing up. Right. So what they have to do is, is they have to go and watch themselves. I think Alonzo Ball should go and get on the TV and watch every game that he had. Yep. Watch it all. Just watch it all. And then see, say, what did I do wrong and what am I doing wrong? What can I improve on? Don't be big-headed and say, because I'm the number two pick or whatever, and everybody's talking about me, I'm going to be good. Because if he walk on that court again, he's not going to be as good as he – he's going to be the same way. He's going to be the same basketball player he was this year if he doesn't – if yep. he doesn't improve. Doesn't make those adjustments. He doesn't make them adjustments. GP, before you go, has there anybody in the history of the game ever had a workload like LeBron as to score, rebound, and assist the basketball in the history of the game? I don't think so. Uh, I think it was it was this guy right here does a lot. He does he does too much to me. And then I think he wore himself out in these finals because he was trying to play forty eight minutes. Mm. I think what happened was after game number one, mm-hmm. he got very very upset and disappointed that he just decided, man, look, let me play too much, and it wore his body down. And then the mm. Golden State Warriors are really too good for that. Right, they're really too good. Mm. They kept pounding on him and pounding on him, and then I seen his whole mentality go just like this. Mental fatigue. His mental fatigue. He went just like this. Yeah. When then when he started kicking the ball and the guys weren't making them shots, mm-hmm. he just disappeared to me. And that's he's he's too good of a basketball player for that to happen. That's why Kyrie. Was a big that was a big fall for them because that guy could have took over a game yeah. and let him rest and he could go out and he can score the basketball and do that. He didn't mm. have that on his team this year, mm. and I think that was the problem that LeBron had. But as you say, I never seen a kid do this. Every, every time you see this, he breaks a record about anything in the NBA. I don't care how much people talk about him or whatever they say, he breaks a record every time you see him. He hmm. breaks another record, another record, and another record. We're not going to keep putting these records up here and then, and then they, they come out of the blue. He breaking them for some reason because mm. they're kind of a player. Yeah. Breaking them. That's yeah. it. Yeah, Michael right. Jordan had the ball in his hands in the playoffs more than LeBron does in his hands. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. But, but he, I'm just saying Michael Jordan had a better basketball team than he did. He had a, he had a good, good, good crew, a good cast, what about that and coach? they were – Coach was great, too, and he made great decisions. He put players in the Chicago Bulls, put players in the right position. Mm-hmm. You had a Luke Longley. You had a Kirk. Yeah. You had a yeah. guys like that who made baskets for Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan made it really, really easy just mm-hmm. to score the basketball. But you had a guy like Scottie Pippen, mm-hmm. who was another Hall of Famer that mm-hmm. you had that can do things, too. With so not discount. Huh? With old Rodman. Rodman, oh, he changed the game. Because he he defended everybody, so we it, it, it's a totally different game. Let me let me tell you about this. It's just a totally different era. He had a great he had a great cast more than LeBron. Okay, got- 